Good morning, seniors. Good Tuesday morning, uh, although I'm recording this on a Saturday. Uh, today, we're going to be going through the things that you need to be reviewing on to get ready for the test. Now, you can get this video as early as Monday evening, so that will give you Monday, Tuesday to begin reviewing on it. I'll post the test late Tuesday, and you can have whenever I post it Tuesday up through Wednesday midnight to take it. I'm going to ask you not to use your friends, okay, after the, before you get the test started. Uh, and once you take it, please don't reveal to others the way in which I've asked these questions. Uh, second, please don't use your internet, any searching. Now you may use your notes, open notes. That will be fine, anything you've done. I'll leave it up to you to be honest with that. Let's go ahead and begin in prayer before we uh, before I start running down these things. You'll bow with me. Father, uh, in these days of difficulty, of uncertainty, be our rock, be our refuge. Father, help us in these times of forced passivity, of forced stillness, to listen for your voice, to be aware of the movement of your spirit, enable us to see your work going on in us and around us and through us, and enable us to join in. In the name of Jesus, who heard your voice, obeyed perfectly, and who now intercedes for us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right. We're not going to use the PowerPoint today. Uh, again, you can uh, speed this up or slow it down, or speed it up or slow it down whatever to try and help you help you with this. First thing on the test, as in every test, is going to be those five characteristics to be able to catch probably in a, in a multiple choice situation that ultimate authority is found in nature. All right. You know, believers said, oh, obviously it's God, but they would say, but nature as, as God has given it to us actually controls our thoughts, our minds, even, even our psyche. And Freud and, and Skinner will say, oh, yeah, it even controls our decisions. We think we have free will, but no, it's all nat natural. It's all given us through operant conditioning. All right. Uh, second, reality. Ultimate reality is observable, open to our understanding. Okay. If we can look at it, it's out there. It's orderly orderly it makes sense and we can watch it and we can figure out how it works no mysteries here ultimately no mysteries third what's a human being he is the finest that natural processes that evolution has brought about so far he's the pinnacle of the evolutionary process at least by the very late modern era that's what the mindset that was sort of ruling our, our the I ideal the, I the world of ideas excuse me Fourth, how do we know right from wrong? Primarily by thinking through the consequences. Where is this going? What's going to happen? No, even Christians fell into this when they said, well, of course, God is always wanting us to do the right thing. God will do what will end up being the best. Yes. From God's perspective, from the long-term perspective. Okay. Uh, when we start defining best, we get in trouble. I'm preaching here. All right. And then last of all, last of all, uh, what is our purpose? Our purpose is as best we can to understand this natural world, whether we're talking about the physical world, the chemical, physical, biological world, or even the world of ideas, the world of our psyche, and enable to manipulate it, to control it to our advantage to make sure that this world comes under our dominion, okay, without reference to God. Late modern era, that's those five worldview questions. Okay, some terms you need to know. I'm not going to go through term line by line. You can look through your notes and get these. Know the term a priori, the things we know before we even know it. They're in our minds. Tabula rasa. Okay, so we'll go through it. Blank slate. Hume's problem of induction, that is, 
any truth that we figure out by observation can always be something else. We can never get enough ideas here to always know that this is absolutely true. We say that ravens are black. How do you know? Is there not one out there? Can you possibly get enough information? Okay. Uh, the problem of causation, also a human problem. That cause and effect is something that we bring into it. It's not something that lies in the things themselves. Uh, no, the process by which evolution occurs according to Darwin by natural selection. Be able to match that up in a matching or multiple choice. No Marxist two classes of society. The top, the businessmen called in his words, the bourgeoisie, the bourgeoisie, the bourgeoisie, and then the poor, the proletariat. So bourgeoisie at the top, proletariat at the bottom. Uh, know what Nietzsche meant when he called them the ubermensch, the upper man, the superman, or in the reading you saw, the overman. Uh, and then last of all, know uh, the three parts of the psyche according to Freud, and know what they are. The ego, the I, the thinking part, the one that is aware that it is a, a Sunday, uh, pardon me, a Saturday. See, so yeah, I may not be thinking that clearly, that it is a Saturday and that I'm up here on a cool sort of overcast day, possibility of storms coming, I'm aware of this, I haven't had supper yet. Okay, those sort of, that's what, then know the id, the part that is saying, Got a candy bar over there. It's calling to me. It's frustrating me. I've been sitting here way too long. I'm getting a little bit angry and frustrated here, but I'm, I'm not going to reveal. I'm not going to let it out. Okay. Well, then you fool me. Because my ego said, no, 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 you can't feel that. No, you sh shouldn't do that. Actually, was that the ego or was it the super ego? The part that says, no, you should not feel that way. Good people don't do that sort of thing. You sit there like a good little boy and you don't eat your candy because that will make you fat. All right. The superego, the rule keeping, the id, yeah, the part that wants what it wants, and then in between the ego that makes decisions consciously, but according to Freud, that ego is not aware of all the information. All right. It represses this id because it cannot Quick survey. Know these people, and I'm just going to ask you to look at your notes. Know about the uh, three empiricists Locke, Inky Slate, Barclay. God is the one who makes sure that everything pulls together. Hume, how can you trust anything? The ultimate skeptic, all the problems he listed. Then know Kant or Kant how Immanuel Kant tried to hold that together by saying, no, no, we can trust because we are created as human beings with these, uh, these means of understanding the world, these filters through which the world comes through, and we can trust the filters. And you ask him, can you trust reality out there? And he'd say, no, not really, but we can trust our filters. We can trust what we see because we all have the same filters. Okay. Okay, no Kant, no, no those guys. Uh, no Darwin, sure you know Darwin, his ideas. Marx, Communist Manifesto, right? That all is class conflict and that will end up with the proletariat, the poor overthrowing the, the bourgeoisie, the businessmen, the industrialists, the capitalists and creating a classless society. Uh, no Nietzsche. And um, we spent a lot of time with him. Uh, Voltaire, sorry, I ran past Voltaire a moment. No, Candide, a little bit of those, that story. That's what it is. Uh, no, our existentialists, we talked about Kierkegaard, Christian, one who said, I need to find a faith that I can live and more than that, that I can die for, okay? I, I, I want to know Christ and I, I want, and I don't want to know him like everyone else because if, if you're born into a Christian culture, if you, accepted to Christ because everybody else around you is, you're not a Christian. You have not made that radical choice to step away from the world. Uh, Kafka, metamorphosis, we spent a lot of time with that. Uh, Sartre, uh, the one who 
talked with us about bad faith. All right. And one must choose for oneself and the importance of choice, not the consequences of that choice. You just simply choose, choose. Okay, look back over those notes. Uh, and then the last two, know Freud, that model, psyche, and B.F. Skinner, the ultimate behavioralist. Some concepts you need to know, and I have not yet figured out exactly how I'll ask this, whether they will be asked as a short answer or Maybe I might move them into a into a multiple choice, but know about Nietzsche's two moralities, right? There's a slave morality, or the slave morality, yes, that values obedience and kindness and humility, and 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 compassion. All of those wonderful Christian virtues that Nietzsche would say are quite fit for a slave, for someone who other people are going to step on. Then the master morality, one which values courage and, uh, and, and being ready to step out, willingness to take advantage of others, uh, uh, you know, those sorts of things. Look back over the reading and the quiz. Uh, look back over that. And I'll also know what Nietzsche meant when he said God is dead. You mean God had actually died? No, he never believed in God. But God had united a culture, certainly the Western culture, from the late Roman Empire when Christianity had, had uh, sort of taken over the culture all through the Middle Ages and the early modern age where Christian faith was a granted, all right? There were things that were right and that were, that were wrong. God said it, I believe it, that settles it. God is dead for him meant that morality, that worldview is no longer persuasive. But according to Nietzsche, nothing else has risen. Now is the time for you as a Superman to step in, step out, get it done. Don't be like the last man, the couch potato, simply letting life happen. Last concept, know about moral. Therapeutic deism, know about the meaning of those three words. Moral, God wants to be kind and nice, good to each other. Okay. Therapeutic, that God wants us to be happy. And anything that stands in our way of happiness is it's just by its, no, self, by its nature wrong. And that's problematic. And then last of all, deism. God pretty much stays out of the picture unless we really, really need him. Call him in in those cases. Those are the main ideas. Again, stop this, rewind it, run it back. I'm hoping to have a Kahoot ready to play during our Zoom session. So if you can show up for that, that'll be great. If not, after the Zoom session, I'll try and send it out. Have a wonderful Tuesday. Adios.